Hello everyone, today we'll be looking at ClickSense and how you can create a simple coronavirus dashboard so you can explore critical trends and see how countries are performing. I'll walk you through the steps needed to build it and in just a few minutes you'll have an interactive dashboard up and running. So without further ado, let's get started. In this video, we'll be using the COVID-19 repository by the Johns Hopkins University. Please check out their website for more information. However, since I don't particularly like working with CSV files, we'll be using an unofficial API that pulls this data every 10 minutes. This API exposes few endpoints that we'll query within our application. The first thing you'll need to do is to sign up for a Click Cloud account or download ClickSense desktop version while you can as it will no longer be free starting July 2020. I'm gonna create a new tab to work on the first endpoint and then we'll create a connector of type REST. Give it a name and paste it in the base URL specified in the GitHub repository. Click on select data and expand out the tables dropdown to see a list of all the tables for that endpoint. Locations table provides static information at a country level and all the way down up to province level. In the history table is the one we want to pay attention to. It contains all historical confirmed cases by date and by location. Select all tables from the dropdown on the left and then click on insert script. ClickSense will then generate the code for us. I'll get rid of some pieces we don't need and I'll just skip the last dates of the dataset for testing purposes. Let's load everything and see what are we dealing with. I'll open the data model viewer tab as it will help us visualize the data model we have so far. So at this point, we've loaded the geographical information and the entire historical confirmed cases information. Right now, we have a specific column for each of the dates that we are loading. I personally don't like this model. I'd rather have a single date dimension column so that we can select specific date values within the filter panes or in the x-axis of our line charts. In here we have the current situation where we have a specific column name for each of the dates and this is what we want to achieve. We want to transform the first table into another one where each row is a new location key and date combination. To this end, we'll use the cross table function, which converts a white table with many columns into one with lesser columns and more rows. We'll need to specify an attribute field name, first column auxiliary date, and a data field name, confirm cases. The qualifier number sets the number of fields from the first table we want to keep in the second one. So we need to make sure we load first the key locations dimension so we don't lose it during the transformation. So let's apply the cross table function, setting aux date and confirm cases as new column names and one as the qualifier. We'll load everything from history confirm table and then we'll drop it when it's no longer needed. Let's load the data and check the result of this transformation. Cool. So for each country date combination, we now know the total amount of cases up to date but we are still missing the daily increment, the daily cases in a specific date. We'll create a fax table where we'll load the confirmed cases and the daily confirmed cases as a subtraction of the confirmed ones minus the previous value, so in the previous row. Finally, we'll also load both location and date key dimensions. We'll load again and then check the data model. A new column has been created and the daily cases match. Now we have some weird values for each location date combination as it cannot compute the previous value if it doesn't exist. So we'll update that expression, making sure the value exists, is not null and is greater than zero. Awesome, we now see zeros on the first data point for each location date combination. The code that ClickSense wrote itself was specifically hard coding all the column date names. This doesn't scale and means that we would need to manually update the code 
if we wanted to load tomorrow's data. Ideally, we would like to use the asterisk symbol within the SQL select statement and load everything at once. But there is a click sense limitation in which we cannot do that within SQL nested queries. We'll generate a string variable that contains all date values from the first case until today's date. By using this variable, we won't need to update the code anymore and it will always load the newest data automatically. We'll also generate some auxiliary variables in the process. First, SQL date format, as in month, day, year, matching the column names. We'll generate a start date variable and set it up to January 22nd and an end date variable as well. Finally, we'll define an empty variable to be used within the loop. So let's build the logic now. We'll use a do while loop while the start date is lower or equal than the end date. We'll pick the date value inside the loop and increment that by one. And finally, we'll construct the output variable by setting the value to itself plus the current value inside the loop. Finally, we'll need to include the key locations field name in the variable and change the end date to today's date using today's function. Now that we've got the variable working, we need to update the history confirm table to include all these new columns. We'll update the load statement by loading everything, making sure we rename the key locations dimension, otherwise we'll end up with repeated column names. Lastly, we'll drop all the fields that haven't been used to avoid a synthetic table in our data model. This time around, we're loading the entire historical data and the daily cases column is working as expected. Awesome, we'll build now the logic for the second endpoint, the death cases. We'll update the value of the URL variable, delete some bits we don't need, and rename anything related to confirmed cases back to death cases, as in table names and dimension names. Lastly, we just need to left join the history deaths table back into our main fax table. This group successfully loads and then we double check the data has joined correctly in the model viewer tab. For the very last endpoint, we'll repeat the same process. We'll copy and reuse the script in the previous tab and rename all references from death cases to recovered cases. Before finishing, we just have one last thing to do as I've countered an issue with the location keys in this last endpoint. As we've seen, these endpoints provide data at the province level, but we need to be careful with the recovered endpoint as the location key values are different from the values in the previous endpoints. In red, there's few examples of location keys not matching across endpoints. This would produce wrong data in the last left join operation. To fix this inconsistency across endpoints and to make sense out of this data, we'll be defining a specific mapping in each endpoint and applying them in both left join operations. You can find the complete code in the GitHub link in the description down below. Now that we've got the data model ready, we can start creating some visualizations. I'm gonna keep it short as this process can take a while depending on how much of a detailed oriented person you are. As a recommendation, I always start off by creating some master measures that will be used across the dashboard and defining color palettes. In this demo, I'll be using pasta colors that really stand out as I'm using a darker theme on the background. Okay, I've been exploring different options for a couple hours now, and I gotta say I'm pretty satisfied with how this dashboard is looking. The dashboard is divided into several tabs that will serve different purposes. In the overview tab, we see the current status of the pandemic in terms of all the key metrics we've built in our data model. This page aims at showing you the bigger picture overall. First, a point layer map shows you the number of confirmed cases up to date. Then we have the total cumulative confirmed, death and recovered cases with the daily trend on the background, as well as the same metric by country sorted descending. 
Finally, we count the number of countries being considered in the dataset, the remaining active cases, and both the mortality and recovery rate. The next view is kind of self-explanatory, flatten the curve. In this page, we show the evolution of confirmed, death, and recovery cases, both cumulative, in linear and logarithmic scale, and daily cases. A flattened curve looks like it sounds flat. We can select specific countries and dates in the filter panes above and check if the curve is showing a downward trend or is still increasing. The next page aims at answering the question, how is a country performing compared to others? Is it showing larger or smaller numbers? We can even extract more conclusions if we include the specific dates in which a country went to lockdown or is starting the de-escalation process. We first display the same cumulative curves by the top 10 countries, but we can always select specific countries on the filter panes above. Then, if we scroll down, we'll see the daily percentage of each cases by top countries. The smaller share is captured in the other's bucket. Then, on the right side, pie charts show the relative contribution that countries have to each of the metrics. Moving on to the next view, we want to understand how does mortality differ across countries. Differences in mortality numbers could be caused by various reasons. Different number of people being tested, demographics, characteristic of healthcare systems or other factors. We first see a similar map that the one in the overview page now showing the death rate. Next to it, there is a trend on the death cases and the actual death rate by country. At the bottom, we then see the confirmed cases versus death cases. On the pie chart, we see the share, the piece of the cake as confirmed cases and the radius as in death cases. Finally, we have a scattered plot giving the same information on the right. So far, we've used really basic metrics such as the sum of confirmed cases or the ratio between death and confirmed cases. In this last page though, I've used metrics that are a bit more complex in terms of set analysis. First, I've created a bar chart that shows the number of days that it took a country to reach 100, 1000, 10,000 and 100,000 confirmed cases since the first confirmed case in that country was reported. On the right side, we have the same analysis for the death cases. Lastly, in the bottom chart, we see the trends start in a common point in time. The chart shows the average daily confirmed cases by rolling week starting on the date when the first 100 cases were reported in a specific country. Let me select a few countries first. We see China with a longer trend because it was the first country to report cases. As an example, on the day that I'm recording this video, it's been 11 weeks since the first 100 cases in US and the weekly average of confirmed cases, it's been around 22k, although it seems that it's slowly decreasing now. Before finishing this video, I want to briefly talk about scheduling, as in setting up automation to always see the latest data in our dashboard. If you choose to host your application in the cloud, you can easily create a task using the ClickSense Management Console to schedule a data reload. Since I'm using ClickSense desktop version, I've added a button extension that allows me to reload the application on demand when I click on it. It's not ideal, but it does the job right. That's all I wanted to show you today. We've gone through a lot, so let me recap with what we've accomplished in this video. We've explored data from the John Hopkins University COVID-19 repository. We've created a basic data model, and we've gone through various ways to display the data in order for us to explain a story successfully. You can take this dashboard as an example and take it even further by including other data sources that captures data by gender, age, hospitalization rates, or you can even build a country-specific dashboard using smaller region data. If you've liked this video, please consider subscribing to support the channel and leave a like as it always helps. All resources used in this video, along with the complete clicks and script, can be found in the links from the video description below. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in another video.